Forget about lemons, 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 lemons. I want to talk about lemons, lemons, lemons. There's only three. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theatre. I am an independent theatre critic based here in the UK, as well as a content creator here on YouTube. And today, I want to talk to you about a show I was invited to go and review in London last week called The Lehman Trilogy. This was at the Gillian Lynn Theatre, and I'm going to be bringing you my full review today. Also, disclaimer, I do have a cold right now, but there are so many things I need to review, I cannot take another day before coming on to YouTube, so you're just going to have to deal with my voice sounding like this. And if by any chance it doesn't sound as gross as I think it does, and it sounds at all like jazzy and sultry, then you are welcome. <laughs> So like I said, I was invited to review this show last week by the very kind team at the National Theatre, where it originally premiered back in 2018. Subsequently, it transferred to the West End, and then the world started to end for a brief period. But it eventually made its way to Broadway, uh, and has now returned to London's West End. It is playing at the Gillian Lynn Theatre, and we're going to talk about it today. But before we do, if you enjoyed today's video, I have made so many more here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Go and check out some of my other reviews if you're wondering what to see in London right now. And if you want to see even more content, including getting to see my initial reviews of shows as soon as I leave the theatre, uh, then you can check out my members section of my YouTube channel. Click on the link in the description there and you can join for just £2.99 a month and get a bunch of exclusive content. And if you want to read all of my written reviews, collated in one nice and easy spot, as well as reviewing shows for yourself, you can sign up for an account with Showscore. That is the other link in the description of today's video. It is free to sign up, it's very fun, and you can review all of the shows that you've seen in London or New York. Now, without any further ado, let's talk about the Lehman Trilogy. So this was a really great piece of theatre, as you would expect with something from The National, when they're going to do something of this scale, with the kind of actors that have been involved in this since the beginning. I mean, previously in the run, Adam Godley and Simon Russell Beale and Adrian Lester and a bunch of other people have all been in the show. It has a new cast for this run, uh, who we're going to talk about in some more detail. It's directed by Sam Mendes. It is credited as having been written by Stefano Messini and adapted by Ben Power. And it's a really interesting play. It is also epic. This is three acts and over three hours long. Now there were moments in the first act that I worried that the whole thing might be a little bit dry. Essentially what you have is it is telling the story of the Lehman Brothers, three brothers who came to 19th century America from Europe as Jewish immigrants and founded this small family business uh, that eventually traveled to New York and as the world progressed and as capitalism boomed and everything changed financially, the Lehman Brothers changed with it and their organization changed and it became a bank and it exceeded their initial expectations and grew to these titanic financial proportions, all of which would come crumbling down famously in 2008 in, I believe, the biggest bankruptcy to date worldwide. So the play talks about all of this, it looks at the characters involved, we have this initial generation of brothers, and then we're introduced to their sons, and then their sons' sons, and it does a great job of explaining financially where all these decisions came from, why they pivoted from being about cotton, to then investing in the railroads, and then talking to us about the stock market, and a lot of things that you might not have understood about the complex financials of all these things, and the stock market, and all of this stuff, and how that works, is explained very well. But rather than being about that, it is mostly about the family, and these men, and their ambitions, and sort of what it is to be a great man of history. Because this takes place over more than a century, we also see all of these historical events unfolding around them. We see the Wall Street crash, we see wars, we see various things happening that would affect the financial stability of their company. So the way this story has told, and how it's been directed by Sam Mendes, is to have these three actors just narrating what happened in their lives in the third person, basically, as each of the characters that they portray. They portray various characters going through time uh, over the course of the play. And it feels a little bit 
stale in the first act. You wonder why it hasn't been sort of more richly theatricalized rather than just having someone sort of reading to you as if it's an audiobook happening live on stage. And the whole thing in that first section at least starts to feel like a little bit of an old fashioned documentary. But it picks up steam and it's adaptive. And as we move through the different generations, Sam Mendes has been very clever because the way that he chooses to tell the story and the movement and the staging and the use of different things that the set can do, more on that momentarily, and the lighting design, everything shifts and it picks up momentum and the whole thing starts spinning out of control. So the first act is considerably slower and more still and more reserved as they're telling you sort of very steadily and very measuredly about their dignified family perspective. And we're moving very, very slowly through the years. And then by the end, we are just spinning through the decades as everything is going out of control, basically. So if I wasn't sold in the first act, I was definitely sold by the end. And I am giving this a four star review. Why not five, you might ask? Well, let me tell you. So it's interesting, I immediately knew upon leaving the theatre that this was a great play, a really great piece of theatre, and the performances are damn near perfect, the direction was stunning, the writing is really great, the staging, the visuals, all of it. Um, so it's interesting to have something be a four, not a five, not because of any kind of creative shortcoming, but just because of the scope of the piece. And I think the way it chooses to tell this story and what it chooses to focus on limits it a little bit because what you have here is a piece about these three white men and the next generations of white men and them creating and helping to create and found this capitalist system and being these huge parts of American history leading up to this financial devastation in 2008 that had a huge impact for a great many people. So many of the events talked about in the play have a great impact for a lot of people and it feels like we're excluding those people from the narrative by focusing on these great men and we just get their perspective. It's not particularly investigative of their emotional journeys. We get a little bit of insight into it, but for the most part, uh, we're just introduced to them and we characterize them through these very generic things. Here's a man who was raised a certain way, so that is how he will respond to situations. This man grew up and really liked trains. This man grew up and really liked horse racing. And so that's a about as much as we get to know any of them. It is not emotionally explorative. And throughout all of this, when you have war and you have civil war and all of these terrible things happening in America, we are focusing quite narrowly on their business interests and uh, sort of celebrating and uplifting almost all of the figures. It's not hugely critical. I mean, towards the end, more so, but it certainly doesn't take as sharp aim as it could at these figures whose greed and dedication to building this empire for themselves had a huge impact on a lot of other people's lives. It feels like the kind of thing that would be really great for a Netflix series. I also feel like we missed a lot of the great detail towards the end. I really wanted to find out more about 2008. I was born in 1995. I was 13 in 2008. I'm aware of what happened and I've read up on it since because I found this really interesting um, and I knew of it at the time and the impact and all of this stuff that went down, but I wanted that to get talked about more. I kind of felt like if James Graham had been writing this play, then we would be exploring that event in greater detail. But I did like all of the cultural stuff and that we had this through line of talking about their relationship to their Jewish culture and the way that with this being an immigrant family, as we went through the generations, they became more and more divorced from their Jewish culture in the way that they responded to death. Uh, principally in terms of traditions they are meant to observe with sitting shiva and the like. So that, that was really interesting. And like I said, still a great piece of theater, but for me, limited in what it chose to tell us. Yeah. 
So I have to tell you about something that happened on the night that we went. And we were told by stage management that in 17 performances so far at the Gillian Lynn, this was the first time that this had happened. So I don't want this to colour anyone's um, anticipation of the play, but I do, I do think that I ought to share it with you because they have this phenomenal set designed by Ez Devlin. It's this modern contemporary office space with a few different rooms and you can see into it from all four sides and it rotates around on the stage initially slowly and then that gets used more and more as we pick up the pace as we move through the subsequent acts ingeniously they have these banking boxes that you have paperwork in um, that are basically visually synonymous with everything that happened with the downfall of this company in 2008 because they were all over all of the pictures in the headlines of them being carried out of the building amidst all of this chaos and financial controversy and they are used as all sorts of set pieces. They become chairs and tables and we're stacking them up and moving them around constantly. So you have this very naturalistic office set, but we're using the boxes to portray other things in a more imaginative way. Which is very clever. It's very much Sam Mendes brilliance. So on the night that I went, we're in the third act. We couldn't have been more than half an hour away from the end of the show and the set encountered a little bit of a problem in its rotation. So the stage manager came out um, and explained to the audience that they were just going to have to tweak something. The actors went and sat down as they rotated the set around, which brought the actors then back into view because they'd gone to the back and they kind of waved to us or Nigel Lindsay waved and Hadley Fraser hid behind a newspaper. It was very funny and it was very much like good on the stage management for handling it so well, good on the actors for jumping back into it because, you know, it's, it's a marathon of a play where all three of them are on stage together the entire time. So to have them be cut off mid-performance like that has to have been challenging. And the audience was really responsive as well and really grateful, but they went back into it. And I think maybe 10 minutes later, it happened again. And this time they had to bring the whole safety curtain down. They had to take the actors off the stage. And for about 10, 15 minutes, they were then testing and working out if they were going to be able to fix this set, which they did. And we then got to see the end of the performance. I believe we saw everything staged thereafter the way it would have been originally. I don't think they were changing anything because of the set, but I can't necessarily be sure because it rotates all these different ways. Um, so I don't know how much of that was what we were meant to be seeing. So that's just a little bit of a disclaimer as to the version of the performance that I saw. It did mean that we were in the theater for more than four hours. But like I said, this was the only time that this had happened in 17 performances. So just unfortunate that it happened when they happened to have press in reviewing. Now let's talk about the performances. So we have a trio of fantastic actors in this play. We have Michael Balligan, we have Nigel Lindsay, and we have Hadley Fraser. Brilliant, accomplished, wonderful storytellers, which is principally what this is about, because like I told you, the way that they are acting, the way that they are narrating these stories in the third person, they're storytellers. That's what it needs to be. And each of them exceptional in their own ways. I want to start with Michael Balligan. He plays this seriousness and this brooding sincerity more so than the other two very, very well. The first character that he plays, uh, who is called Emmanuel Lehman, he's really compelling and he becomes one of the most prominent forces of the three in the early parts of the play. Nigel Lindsay was the one who we had met at first. He was the first to come to America. Um, he takes the name Henry Lehman because that's the way his name gets pronounced when he arrives in New York. And he has this really comforting quality and a lot of pathos and presence. Now, Nigel Lindsay is effortlessly very, very funny. And there are a couple of moments where he gets to be comedic. He plays um, a wife of one of the later characters in the play and he's just effortlessly very funny so it's interesting that so much of what he's doing in this play is quite serious and sincere and against type of what he can do but he's also just a tremendous dramatic actor as well hadley fraser gets maybe the most expressive role in this play he is a kind of withdrawn um, character when he's playing one of the three initial brothers, uh, playing a character called Maya Lehman, but the character that he ends up playing in the third act is expressive and, and wild 
and he probably gets what would be called the showier role, especially by the time that you're leaving the theatre, his is the performance that will probably stay with you. And it's very likely Hadley Fraser's musical theatre background that lends him being so expressive and so dynamic, and he gets to dance a little bit in this. It's not choreography, but he gets he gets to dance a little bit. They also multi-role as a bunch of different characters, so a few of them play children, and a few of them play women, and Hadley Fraser is the most believable when doing this. He is the greatest chameleon of the three, I think. And another one, very, very funny, just in his asides and his gestures and his body language, he can get a big, big laugh. And I love the phase of his career that he has entered into, where Hadley Fraser is doing these plays and doing this, like, big national theatre work. Like I said, this play has attracted a bunch of fantastic, very capable actors to its casts since it opened. It does feel a little bit kind of like a vanity project, if I'm being honest, where it's like this great play about great men in American history directed by a great director with great male actors, and the whole thing is a little bit of a national theatre sausage fest, dare I say it. Um, but it is, it is, it is good, it is good theatre, and I appreciate them casting a, a slightly diverse cast, and not just having three white men in every production of this playing three white men. So some other things creatively that I want to talk about with this play. The whole thing is underscored by this piano accompaniment, which is lovely, and I want to be able to tell you a little bit more about that. So the music was composed by Nick Powell, who was also the sound designer, as well as Dominic Bilkey. Candida Caldicott was the music director, and the pianist for this performance was Ishani Perenpaniagam. Katrina Lindsay did the costume design. They have these constant costumes throughout that are indicative of the initial three characters that they played, the Lehman brothers who first arrived, even when they stopped playing those characters, you still see their clothes. So they are sort of ever present on stage, even as their legacy starts to become tarnished and they are more and more forgotten. And Luke Halls did the video design. So on the back wall of the theater behind this rotating set, you see video design, which is really cool. And again, sort of gets more sophisticated and more elaborate as we progress through the decades. There's this one piece of imagery in the text where they talk about a tightrope walker outside of the New York Stock Exchange. And this is used to symbolize various different things, but the way that it's shown with the video design in the background where they just show this thin line and you have this black and white contrast is tremendously effective. It's kind of like pin drop theater. It's really spine tinglingly good moments that you get. And it's because of the way that this video design and the staging complements everything else that's going on with the writing. So let's talk about the theatre going experience. So this is at the Gillian Lynn Theatre. Um, I really like the way that the artwork looks on the outside of this building. It's really nice. I really like the way that they have staged it. I love the set design and the video design happening in the background. There is one moment in the third act that is a little bit dizzying. I think if you experience motion sickness, there's just one sequence where they have all these numbers in the background getting faster and faster and faster. And I had to kind of relax my eyes for a bit because it got a little bit intense. I will also say, arrive early or pre-order your drinks if you want to be able to get drinks during these intervals. These are 15 minute intervals, not 20. And there are two of them, there's meant to be two of them when they don't have show stops. And um, there don't seem to be enough bars for the number of people that want drinks at the Gillian Lynn. Bear in mind, there is not like a wide range of ages in this audience. You're not gonna see a lot of children at this play. So it's most of the people who seemed to want to drink and the queues were massive, massive queues. It also starts at seven o'clock, or it did at the performance that I was at. Matinees will be different, obviously, uh, because it runs for upwards of three hours. They have some nice merchandise on sale as well. If you want to see what that looks like, I showed it in my weekly vlog that I posted recently, so you can go and check that out as well. But those have been my thoughts on the Lehman Trilogy currently playing at the Gillian Lynn Theatre in the West End. If you have been to see this play already, either in this new production or previously at the National, at the Piccadilly or on Broadway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And if you would like to review it for yourself, you can do so on Showscore by signing up for a free account with the link in the description. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stage YouTube channel for plenty more videos, including lots more reviews coming very soon. Literally, I have so many shows to review this week, it's ridiculous. As a reminder, if you want to be able to watch even more of my content and hear my first impressions of shows as soon as I have left the theatre, make sure you sign up to become one of my YouTube members. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>